This is Jen Miller and today I'm going to do my first instructional video on Pazanki and I'm going to turn a regular chicken egg into this lovely cross design for Easter. Using a regular store-bought egg, I divide, design, and dye the egg based off of a pattern that I got from Design Book 5 that is produced by the Ukrainian gift shop. Um, it's a really simple design. All you need is a kiska, beeswax, a couple different dye colors. Um, in my case, I used blue and purple, but you can use yellow and blue, you can use blue and green, whatever you like. Just make sure when you're dyeing, you go from lightest to darkest. So uh, you can see I have a chicken egg right here and I blew the chicken egg out today. was actually a lot of work. I thought it would be really easy, but I have a new appreciation for people selling already blown eggs. Because uh, you have to blow the egg out, you drill a hole in the bottom, you can see I got a little, little chip there in it. Um, then you have to put bleach in the egg, shake it, drain it. Um, and then I, for the last step, I actually stuck the egg in the microwave um, just to sanitize it and make sure that I didn't have any more liquid coming out the bottom. So what would happen is I'd have the egg sitting and then um, have a little bit of a seepage from the egg contents coming continuously out, which is really gross when it smells like mine did because I left the eggs out. So um, the first step is uh, just to take like a nice flat, flexible uh, ruler, like what you would find at like a Joanne's Fabrics or something. And you're just gonna wrap it all the way around the circumference of the egg. Um, from zero to zero. Mine has a little tab on it, so I just flick it back when I'm ready to put down the other side. So what I would do is I would mark the ruler there where the um, where my line is, and then I would use that reference point to open back up the ruler and then fold it in half to make my, my uh, line measurements around the egg. Um, and if you need a better description of that, I'll go ahead and put up another video or put up a link to um, drawing out your basic egg design on online. Um, so once you have the egg divided into four sections, uh, you're going to do a basic division um, and this is where you're going to uh, divide the egg both by uh, laterally and vertically. So we have our vertical lines, so now we're just going to divide it laterally. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the top of the, top of the egg where the lines intersect down to the bottom of the egg where the center of my hole is. And it's about eight and a half inches. So I'm just going to count. roughly four and a quarter and that'll be my center um, and then to make your line you just take your pencil and you draw all the way around um, it's better if you hold your drawing hand still and then turn the egg forward or backward um, and this will allow you to keep the same distance and not go up and down on your line Uh, if you have a lathe, which is a device that holds the egg into place, this is much easier. But, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, and um, you can see that, like, I actually got the line pretty accurately back into the center. There's a little bit of waving, but not too bad, so I'm just going to look back over look back over my line, make sure I have my divisions, darken up the... I'm not a line, and I'm pretty happy with my egg. Okay. So the next step is to divide the um, quadrants. This will be quadrant one, two, three, and four, so that we all know what we're talking about. 
just divide quadrant one and divide quadrant two three and four and if I was going for a really advanced design where I had a lot of lines um, I would measure this more precisely uh, with my ruler by measuring the um, from the center down to a point that I pick say a centimeter and a half and then I would take my centimeter and a half mark and I would measure out from the centimeter and a half to measure the um, distance from the vertical line to my diagonal just to make sure that um, each section was exactly precise so that my egg didn't come out um, uneven or crooked later on. But I don't feel like I need to do that because this is a pretty simple design and I can just kind of eyeball it. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of my egg because we want the quadrants to be fairly even. Um, and I'm just going to kind of try to match it up with the line on the other side. Oops, so this one I was going the wrong direction. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed, but the my lines here um, in quadrant two and four were kind of uneven. So I'm just going to go back and look on each side and see what happened. I think this side was actually a little bit off, so I'm just going to redraw it um, from the center and try to make them line up. Um, and it's totally fine to mess up and just to redraw. I just use a, a regular eraser. Um, this is a Factus Extra Soft Eraser, but um, any high polymer erasers uh, will work and it's, it is fine. Um, you can get them at your local art store. Using an eraser, um, the little like the little red ones on a normal pencil, or they're kind of, uh, I don't think they work as well on eggs, so I try not to use those. Okay, so I got my one line done. I'm just going to go back through and erase. So now we're going to step three, uh, where I'm going to pencil in the crosses. Um, and what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to um, measure my crosses so that I get a nice even design along the, the length of the egg and the width of the egg. Um, the first thing I want to do is measure the center. So I would like my center cross to be, I would like to have a one, uh, one centimeter square. So I'm just going to put my um, my half centimeter mark right into the middle of the design and then I'm going to mark top and bottom left and right and then I'm going to just draw in draw in my square and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and for the next step of the design, what I want to do is I want to accentuate um, the center by adding uh, diagonal lines. So just from the diagonals, I'm going to go like this. And you don't have to draw these lines in if you don't want to, if you can just remember. But this is, uh, it becomes kind of difficult to remember what you're doing when you're just, when you're just waxing. So I like to do it ahead of time and be really detailed because the 
the lead does come off really easily. Um, it doesn't stay on your design after you wax and have removed the wax, so I don't really worry about it too much. Okay, so now we have a nice little boxed X in the middle. And then we're going to do the uh, crosses. And I would like the crosses to be kind of long. I'm going to do a um, one and a half inch, or maybe I'll do two inch. I'll do a two inch, two inch cross going from the edge of the box. Um, always pay attention where your where your zero mark is because a lot of times what will happen is you'll start with your zero mark in the center and then you'll move it to uh, the edge of the box and then you'll end up with a lopsided design. Same thing on the other side. Same thing on the side. Okay, so we're almost done with the sketching of the egg. Um, the last part is just to draw in the cross and then add in the, um, the uh, final decorations for the fan of the cross. So I'm just gonna draw the cross like this. It's gonna be the top and then the cross will be up here. And on the top. And the cross. And the top, and the cross, and the cross. Okay, um, and then starting at the edges of the box, what we want to do is draw a fan. So there'll be a fan going up there. And going up from the side. And just do your best to make it even. You can see that I'm drawing a couple of the lines more than one time because I felt like the right side and the left side didn't really match up. Um, but this is just a basic egg. You don't need to make everything perfect. I'm almost completely design, done with the design. Um, you can see the outline for the crosses is in, the arches for the cross edges, which I've just roughly estimated. Um, I didn't use a measuring tape or anything to make sure that they were all perfectly even. I don't think it matters. Um, and now I'm just gonna remind myself that I wanna make uh, little lines going here. Um, and I'm not going to do that on every single edge, just one. I think once is enough. And then for a little bit, um, to add a little bit more to the design, I'm just going to make these small triangles. And now it's time to start waxing. Okay, so my first lines are going to be using a fine tip kiska, and I'm going to basically be putting uh, lines on the part that I want to stay white. 
So I'm going to start out by outlining the four straight crosses near the center. So I'm going to start just a little bit off the off the edge and I'm moving the egg and not my hand when I'm drawing. I'm just rolling it upward. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I have a nice line. Um, I like to pause at the top um, in order to make the the sides of the cross because if you just continue to go vertical, you might leave an awkward amount of space for the sides. So I have my cross and I'm just going to do this on all the sides. And the thin outline is just to add a little bit more dimension to your design. Um, the lines don't have to be perfect. You're just doing this to you know, give your design a little more depth. It's really important while you're waxing to make sure nothing is impeding the wax flow. You'll know right away because the line will come off um, kind of faded and chalky and not black. So if it, if it is, if you're having problems having the wax come out of the tip, just take a cleaning wire and dip it into the tip of the the kiska, the kiska tip, uh, and just remove whatever is impeding the wax flow. It's usually fiber from keeping the egg or the key and or the kiska on a paper towel. That's the most common cause of having the wax begin to get clogged. Okay, same thing on the bottom. But this is easily fixable. You just use a cleaning wire, clean the tip out, and if that doesn't work, empty out the wax that's in the Kiska tip and just fill it back up again with fresh wax. Okay, and I made my first mistake. I accidentally sealed the cross in the center. So I'm just gonna show you how to fix that really quick. So I finished my line, finished my design. I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna put my kiska to the side because it's very, very hot. And um, I just take a little tool and push the wax off. Um, my eggs are all, the surface of my eggs are all a little bit warm when I work with them um, because I have a heat lamp that shines directly on the egg. So it does make it easier for me to remove the wax. Uh, but you know, if you don't have one, that's that's totally fine. Uh, you can just very, very gently scrape off the wax. And if there's any residue, you'll be able to tell really quick because when you put the egg into a dye bath, the dye won't stick to that part where it was waxed. So if there's any residue at all. Um, and what I do if that happens is I just take a little strip of goof off heavy duty wipes and I just wipe it gently right there, but I think it's going to be fine. Okay, so here's what that side looks like. I'm just going to finish this side and then pause the tape and do the other side myself. Um, the other lines that I want to add um, are, let's see, I'd like to outline the triangles. So this part right here. Um, and I'd also like to add thin white lines uh, down the center, the center diagonal right here. Um, and I think that's going to look really nice uh, in the in the finished design because I'm only using three colors. So we're going to add uh, just an outline right here with the fine kiska, a couple line diagonal lines down the center, and then a couple more outlines um, along the top arches of the 
across here. One tip when you're doing the top arches of the cross, just you know, go slowly and um, make sure your Kiska wire isn't caught on anything because if you have any pull, you're gonna make your, your hand go in the wrong direction. I'm just gonna slowly Okay, looks good. And just repeat that step for all, uh, all rows. So repeat that for the for the top. Um, and we're, again, we're just using the fine kiska now. And then the next step is to change. Kiska tips and using medium Kiska to do thicker lines. All right, so I'm almost done with my white lines. Um, the last step is to use the medium Kiska on the outer lines that I want a little bit thicker. I'm just gonna do that really quick. Going to slowly drag the lines outward. Um, I'm right-handed and I tend to like to pull my lines to the right, so I try not to go left because I end up with crooked lines. Um, I try not to go away from my, my right hand, I always try to go toward it. I'm sure if you're left-handed, that's a, uh, it, it's the opposite. Something to just keep in mind when you're trying to decide um, how you're gonna go about drawing your lines. You wanna be really comfortable to try to get the smoothest lines possible. Okay, so I'm just gonna to flip to the other side and I'm going to go from the bottom right up, bottom right, up, bottom right and up. Okay, and I'm gonna do that on both sides, both the front and the back, because I want my design to be even. Um, and then I also wanna go ahead and outline the outside of the box in the center with the medium Kiska, uh, Kiska tip. Just gonna slowly do the middle. Again, I'm rolling the egg as I'm making the lines to try to make them as 
All right, so to finish off my heavy outlines, I'm going to fill in some of the uh, triangles in the center, as well as the diamond shape in between the pieces of the cross um, with uh, my medium key sketch just to, um, I wanna keep these areas white. So in order to keep them white, you have to cover that area with wax to prevent the dye from seeping onto um, the open surface. So I'm just gonna go ahead and carefully fill in the each diamond. And I like to do circles because it, um, it helps keep little holes from developing in the wax. Sometimes if you don't if you don't do that, what you'll have is you'll have little like flecks of white that you don't notice when you're waxing, um, but you do notice later on once you've dyed the egg blue or orange, and all of a sudden you see shiny little orange flecks showing through under the wax, and then you have to go through the process of removing the dye and recovering the white part with um, with wax, and it's just kind of a pain. So because I don't want to do multiple dye baths and um, washing because this is a basic egg. I just want to go ahead and carefully fill in all the diamonds and also these tri uh, triangle pieces in the center. Okay, so for my final line, now that my triangles and my diamonds are all filled in, I'm just gonna run my key, my medium key scalp down the center of the cross to make a line. Um, I'm just gonna try to do that very slowly. Okay, so now that the basic white lines are done, um, it's time for the first dye bath. So before you start, what you wanna do is you wanna take a piece of spaghetti wax and break off a little ball like that. Um, and you wanna roll it between your fingers. It's a little hard for me because I have nails, but I'm sure you guys won't have a problem. Um, just to get the edges down and just to get it a little flat. Then you're gonna flip over your egg and put the ball on the bottom of the egg and just make sure you're closing um, the hole. And then I'm gonna take my medium tip kiska and I very liberally apply the wax around the hole because you don't want dye seeping into the egg when you're, dying, when you're, um, when you're putting the egg in a dye bath. So I just use the side of the kiska to kind of like heat the wax up and then I draw a circle all the way around and get off the flex. Oh, my egg did have a little chip in the hole so my hole is going to be or my circle of wax on the bottom is going to be a little bit bigger than I would normally make it. But that's okay, because this is an instructional video and it's nice to see. Okay, so I'm just going to press down the wax, make sure there's a nice seal. Um, and then for this egg, I wanna go ahead and sign the egg in white. So I'm just gonna take my fine tip kiska and write my name. Um, you don't have to do this, but I always forget to sign the egg if I wait if I wait too long. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take care of it now. Um, and I think I'm gonna write here.
Okay, so I'm set up and ready for my first dye bath. Um, I'm gonna be wearing these rubber gloves just to keep the dye off my hands because it does stain quite quite a lot. Uh, and I got an old sun-dried tomato jar um, to hold my dye. And I just got a packet of blue dye. Um, I'm using aquamarine that I've I've mixed together. Um, but you can use, you know, whatever whatever color you want. Just uh, think about the order of the color. I, you know, I recommend since this is your probably one of your first eggs to do like a, a, a let's say like a, a light green and then a dark green or a light blue and then a dark blue. Um, or you can even do like a, a yellow and then go to blue. But you don't want to go from like blue to yellow. It's not going to work. Um, the, the dye isn't going to take. So just before I go to dye my egg, what I did was I rinsed the egg off really quick, just um, with some soap and water. And then I poured a little baking soda over the egg and scrubbed it. Um, and the reason I did this was because I just cleaned the egg today. And I, I think I may have gotten some bleach on the outside of the shell, which will definitely hurt uh, the color uptake. So before I dip the egg, um, I'm going to, now that it's clean and dry, I'm going to um, dip it really quickly in vinegar. This is just pure vinegar. I'm just going to do a really quick dip. Take it back out. And now I'm ready for my dye bath. And put my glove on. Go over here and I'm going to dye my egg. And I'm just gonna, you know, move the egg around. Um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm only dipping it for about ten seconds. Um, you can see it's a really nice blue color. Uh, I love this color. This is a, a Colorama dye. Um, you should see the label. Pasanki USA Colorama dye. I think they're a dollar. Um, they don't come in the kits, but you can you can really find a ton of, of you know great first first dyes to use. So I'm just gonna like gently dye um, dry the egg with a paper towel. Uh, and this just keeps the excess dye from building up on the surface of the egg. Uh, which will result in a in an inconsistent color because some of the egg will be dye, will be exposed to dye longer than the rest. Okay, so now I'm going to take my medium tip Casca and go over the parts of the design that I want to stay this nice blue color. Uh, I made a quick recording and unfortunately it didn't record, but um, what I decided to do was draw one line down the center of this arch in the box. Um, it's just preference. You don't have to do this if it's you know too hard to get the line straight between between the tri between the whitened out triangles. Um, that's fine. You can just you can color in the whole thing. You can draw a little line. You can do whatever you want. But this is what I decided to do. I just followed my Kiska down the center of the diagonals, but I didn't go through the, the middle square. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the for the cross, I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to turn my egg downward as I move my kiska from bottom to top of the cross. And this is just to leave a nice light blue line going down the center of each cross. So again, do that on the center. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue to fill in the rest of the crosses, the lines on the cross, um, off camera. But what I want to show you is that what I decided to do for this for this top part um, of the of the side of the cross was I I'm just going to make these little lines, um, and this is to create a nice even fan like pattern. at the top of the cross. That's going to be this very light blue color 
I'm also going to fill in the blue along the bottom on this bottom arch of the fan. If you just ordered a kit and you don't have this color, just make sure you go through the correct color progression. Always start with your lighter colors and go to your darker colors. You don't want to go from dark blue to yellow. It's, it's going to make your life kind of difficult. So um, I'm going to go ahead and complete the waxing for the rest of the sides of the cross. I'm just going to do repeat the same thing, filling in this bottom fan and then drawing lines outward to fill in the gap in the middle um, in the middle of the fan. Okay, so we're down to our final couple lines. Just going to trace the outside of the di um, of the diamonds. in my blue. And then I'm going to be ready to dip the egg into its final color. That's it. It's really simple. I'm just going to use, well I'm using three colors technically, but white is just the color of the shell. So I'm really only doing two dye baths. This is a really simple, easy egg to make. And it's a great introduction to Pazanki. Here I have my basic waxed egg. I've used two colors and I decided to make the finishing color purple because my blue wasn't as dark as I wanted it to be and I wanted a better contrast between the aquamarine. So I'm using a royal purple dye um, and I want to make sure that I unplug the bottom of the egg before I stick it in the oven because otherwise it'll blow up. So I just take a lighter and I start melting the bottom. Get the wax nice and nice and hot. Take something to spear the end and poke it through. Okay, so now the hole is open and I won't blow up my egg when I stick it in the oven. To help get the wax off, you can add a little bit of olive oil to the outside of the egg. You can also use baby oil or whatever you have around the house um, and just run the oil along the outside of the egg and the oil won't make the dye come off because it is a water-based dye and um, oils oil don't know how to be any more clear about that okay so I'm going to take my um, oily egg and then I'm going to bring it over to my oven and stick it in and take the wax off I just have a little Euro Pro oven out here in the garage. You can also use a candle to take off the wax or um, if you have an embossing tool, that, that's, that's the best. I'm gonna just stick my egg in there. Leave it in there for a couple minutes. Or, excuse me, like 30 seconds and then um, Gonna take it back out and then remove the wax. And we'll just do it again. So the map, the wax melts off pretty quick. So that was only about 20 seconds. You can see the map, the wax running off. So I'm just gonna put the phone down and wipe it with a paper towel. Okay, so um, here is my finished egg. You can see it's a. Uh, really neat, really pretty cross. Um, and all I did was I removed the wax, I heated up the egg, wiped it with a paper towel, the oil helps remove the wax, and you can see my work. If you wanna protect the egg, because you wanna keep it for a long time, um, then what you wanna do is you wanna take the egg 
and coat it in a coat of uh, polyurethane oil-based varnish. This is the one that I use. And you just want to use a pair of throwaway latex gloves. Apply, um, apply the varnish with your fingers to the outside of the egg. And then let the egg dry. Um, I use these, your, these little bamboo skewers for drying. Um, and I just clip it with a clamp and let the egg dry. I hope you enjoyed my first instructional video. Please post in the comment section if you have any questions.